everybody, this is Dr. Hillbank. This video, actually the video that I'm going to be doing is going to be in a two-part video. This is part one of two, and part two will come after this one and give you the answers to a couple of questions I'm going to ask in this video. And that's the reason I'm making it in two parts. I want to see what everybody's answer is going to be to the questions I'm going to ask. And then when I do the second part, I'll be able to see what people think or what, what, uh, <clears throat> what they think happened to the aquarium. And then I will give you the correct answer. But let's go on with part one. I'm going to say that these two videos that I'm doing are extremely important videos if you're out there and you are having trouble with your aquarium and you are having algae problems, beard algae, hair algae, string algae, cyanobacteria, all these problems could be happening to your aquarium. If your aquarium is doing just fine and you have no problems at all, this video, this video is probably not for you. But for those of you who are having problems, this is an extremely important video that you do not want to miss. It'll be nice to hear from some of the professionals that watch my YouTube channel, what they think the answer is to the questions I will ask. I have a funny feeling they will not answer them because they're scared of being wrong. But anyway, let's get into the video, part one. I went away for a few weeks, and when I go away, um, I have someone come in, they watch the aquariums. With this particular aquarium, all the person does is make sure it's filled with water. They don't feed. They don't do anything to the aquarium. Everything is on timers. Wi-Fi timers, in fact. So all they have to do is just make sure the tank is topped off. I told them, leave the tank alone. It's self-sufficient. As we all know, this tank is being run with a F-Zone filter with a BCB bag in it. It's also being run with a pleno. Okay. So what happened is when we left, I have cameras, I have other things in the house. All of a sudden, within a day or two after we left, the cameras didn't work, nothing was working. I couldn't monitor any of my tanks. I couldn't do anything. Everything was down. That is anything that was, was with Wi-Fi. Well, what had happened is the internet that's coming into the house, the Wi-Fi that's coming into the house is a fiber optic cable and it broke somehow, some way. It broke. Once it broke, the Wi-Fi signal was lost. Now on some of these smart plugs that I use, some of them will have a memory that will stay with them even though there is no Wi-Fi and others, different manufacturer, will um, can get lost once the Wi-Fi signal is lost and they, ha they need to refine that signal. Okay, so what had happened after I left, the cable, the fiber optic cable broke. Nothing I can do about it, nothing the person who was taking care of my tank can do about it. I will say that uh, after that happened, the light on the aquarium, that's on this aquarium, it turns on and off during the day. It will turn on at 8 o'clock and turn off at night, turn back on at 4 o'clock. No, it turns back on, I think, 2 o'clock and turns off at 10 o'clock. The 8 o'clock one is basically so you could see the first feeding of the day. Now there's feedings that happen during this time, but the that's how the light is set on the timer. The feeder that I have, which I did a review on, which is right above my head, the white one, it's not Wi-Fi, it's just Bluetooth. And you put it in the memory of how many times you want it to turn on and off. When it turns on, I have the pump, the F-Zone filter, turn off for about 15 minutes. And that lets the fish eat the food so the food doesn't get all sucked up 
into the canister filter. Since the canister filter has a very strong pump on it, pump at like 450 gallons an hour, it's a very strong pump. I would prefer it not to suck up all the food before the fish can eat it. So I figured 15 minutes and then it turns back on again. Well, what had happened once these Wi-Fi signals got lost, the feeder was fine, but the light turned on and stayed on. So it must have went out right when the light was on. Another thing that happened is the filter turned off. The canister filter with the PCB bag completely turned off 100%. So for the next two weeks, this tank had 100% lights that never turned off. 24-7, the lights were on, and the canister filter had shut down completely for the two-week period. Now, during this two-week period, the fish still get fed. The bubbler stayed on since the bubblers aren't on any kind of timer. It's just an air pump for the plenum and for a bubbler here in the center because there's a lot of fish in the aquarium. And the fish got fed four times a day with the automatic feeder. Life went on as usual. When I came home, the first thing I noticed when I came out here is the tank was full of water. Good. The individual kept the tank full. But the individual didn't realize that the light was never turning off. And they didn't realize that the canister filter was not running. So, first thing I noticed is... What is the light doing on at this time of the day? I think I got home around 1230. So the light shouldn't have been on. It was on. And I looked and I realized the canister filter is not running. I checked the motor out and the motor is nice and cool. The temperature of the aquarium is about 82 degrees. It was a very hot day. Temperature about 82 degrees. Right now the aquarium is about 80 degrees. <clears throat> and I noticed that uh, silica, that real bright green silica algae all over the glass, front, back, everything. So I realized this light has been on a long time. It has not shut off. And, you know, when you get that, like, silica algae on your glass, like it either is that bright green or that uh, brown, and when you go to wipe it off, it looks like a powder or dust in your aquarium, very easy to take off. I could see the ram snail tracks in it. They were eating it because it's a very easy algae for snails to eat and picosimus and fish and everything else to eat. And if you wipe it, it just like, looks like a powder uh, coming off of your aquarium glass. So I went and cleaned everything off. But one thing I noticed after I cleaned everything off, cleaned the glass off, I did my test. I thought, well, I'm going to test the water out. This is a perfect time. Test the water out. No ammonia, no nitrites, no nitrates. It's like, huh. And the canister filter's off. So I took the canister filter and I tested it. Two weeks. Wasn't running. No nitrates, no phosphates, no ammonia, and no nitrites in the canister filter, and no anaerobic bacteria. Hmm. No anaerobic bacteria in a canister filter that's been shut off for two weeks, 14 days. Hmm. Okay, we'll get back to that later. But the aquarium itself, what did I notice? Well, with the light being on 24-7, I noticed all the algae that was a problem algae, which I'll show you pictures of, was gone. All the algae on the Anubias was gone. All the algae on the pieces of wood, except the little bit is there, it was gone. All the algae that was growing on the stones, gone. I noticed something funny that the plants actually looked like they grew. Now, I just have some crip in there. They're, they're small little crip. I noticed they seem to look healthier. Hmm, what's going on here? More light? Then I noticed the snails. The snails were actually growing algae on their shells. 
and uh, this was a problem with that nuisance algae I have in this particular aquarium. It was all gone. The nuisance algae is gone. I can't get rid of this stuff no matter what. Even, even tried spraying it, pulling the gravel out, putting it in a bucket, hydrogen peroxide, pushing it around, putting it back. It, 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 it like dies off a little bit and then it just comes right back. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, the snail shells are all clean. What, the, what, what happened in two weeks? So the plants look better, the fish look better. I noticed the geophagus, their humps had a smoke color to the top of the hump, the males. And I thought, wow, it's not clear, it's actually a smoke color. So they got more colorful. And I did notice that they seemed to pop more, the color seemed to pop. Even some of this red algae, I have a little bit of, I have some stones with a little bit of like this red algae, even that's going away. And I thought, what, what's going on here, right? Not only that, but the Balzanii have spawned during that time. The eggs are in the back behind this piece of wood. She is defending her eggs on a stone I put in the back so she could stay kind of covered if they ever did spawn. You know, uh, they spawn. And maybe that's why the males are extra, extra colorful. But this doesn't make sense because the lights never turned off. I'm not using a canister filter. It's been off. The water parameters are perfect, and the redox is now higher than it was. It's over 350 millivolts. I thought, wow, the redox has risen, and the only algae I had, like I said, basically was on the glass. So my question to you is, in this part one, is question one, why did the canister filter not turn anaerobic after 14 days of being shut down? That's question number one. If you've been watching my videos, that ex that the answer is in my videos to the question I just asked. Why is it the F zone filter? I fired it right up. I didn't have to tear it apart. Didn't have to take it over to the sink, do anything. I fired it right up, and she started up. No hydrogen sulfide, no problems at all. The water coming out of it was clean water with no ammonia, no nitrates, no nitrates, no phosphate. It was, why should I take the canister and clean it out? I just fired it up. Why is my question. The second question I have is, why did all the algae die in the aquarium if the light, which this is an extremely bright light I have, very expensive light, and uh, why, why did the algae disappear? I mean, this is stubborn algae, all, all these stones and stuff, and it would grow and grow long. You know, hey, this could get like two inches long or more grew all over the plant leaves and stuff like that. And I'd have to care for it. But I understood that because you're feeding the fish four times a day. There's more fish in this aquarium than should be. Okay, I know that. Uh, along with the geophagus, along with the goldfish. And everybody looked super healthy. No lesions, no red and fins, nothing. There's something eating on the... Uh, the Ryunkan's fins, I haven't, I haven't seen what is doing it. I can tell it's somebody picking on the fin, okay? And I don't have any Placosimus, so it's not a Placosimus attacking these guys, but uh, they have frayed fins, and I can tell it's somebody picking on them. Could it be the aggression of the cichlids? Maybe being aggressive at nighttime? I don't know. I haven't seen who's doing it. But the next, that's my next question. What happened to all the algae? Well, what, why is it that 
like on the intake to the F zone, there's no algae on the intake even. It's clean. In the back, there's no algae. It's all dying. On my uh, uh, tubing coming up out of the plenum had algae on it. That hair out, gone. All the algae's gone. All the algae on the nubius is gone. There's a little bit of algae existing on the wood, but what happened to the snails? They had algae on their shells. Every one of them did. It's all gone. All the algae went away. So did leaving the light on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, did that do the trick? Leave a comment below what you think happened to the aquarium. Of course, <clears throat> of course I'm being sneaky with this video. If anyone has watched my video, I'm being a little sneaky with this video. But uh, give me your answer what you think it is. And in video number two, I will tell you what happened to the algae, where it went, and I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's no big secret what I'm doing. But I'm going to tell you how to do it. Why is the tank doing so great as far as no ammonia and anything? And if, and if you think about what I'm saying here, try it on your own tank. Try shutting down all your filters except for your substrate. Really, take that sponge filter out of your tank. Now, only have your substrate. Now, leave your light off for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh, and if you have floating plants, take them out. We want to make sure 100%. Oh, and that light that you're using, if it's turned down, turn it all the way up to 100%. Let's have it as real bright as it can get, just like I have. I have this thing at 100% beating down on this aquarium. And yet, the algae was eradicated. It hasn't, it hasn't disappeared 100%, but let's put it this way. There's not a hobbyist out there who wouldn't love to have their tank like this, and the plants are so... The plants look like I just bought them from a store. They look that clean. It's like, where did the algae go? And this is crypt. These are just different crypts I got from other tanks. But these are just crypts in here. Where did the algae go? And they're all growing great all throughout the tank. Whatever crypts, you know, uh, from be changing things over, survive, and they seem to be doing good. As long as the goldfish don't eat them. Okay, let's go with that. Happy fish keeping, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe, because you're going to find out something that will solve your problems of algae permanently, and at that, I guarantee. You will not have an algae problem in your freshwater aquarium. On my next video, I'm going to tell you how to solve the problem. And believe me, I'm not the inventor of it. All I am is the person who is utilizing it correctly. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. So until next time, happy fish keeping and thank you for watching.